I have lots of passions in my life. Gardening, reading. But my two greatest passions are Toastmasters and music. Toastmasters, like a lot of you, has given me the confidence to stand here and talk to you. It's given me the confidence to be able to stand up and beat my fear of public speaking. It's like Dolores Brady said to me one night, Toastmasters have taught me to teach the butterflies how to fly in formation. <clears throat> but, music. Music is my greatest love. John Mills put it very well, a song of the 80s. He said, music was my first love. It would be my last. Music of the future and music of the past. Now I love all types of music, all genres, whether it be folk, rock, rock and roll, all types. I boast a collection of 41,682 pieces of music downloaded onto my computer of all the music I've ever had. I go back as far as the 1920s, back to Ella Fitzgerald, Glenn Miller, right through to the Beatles, through to Bobby Darren, Frank Sinatra, right through to today to Mary Black and Freddie White. But I was just thinking the last night of all, all my favourite music artists, people such as Frank Sinatra, Michael Jackson, I loved him, Michael Jackson, Freddie Mercury, Phil Innes, and something just dawned on me, they're all dead. And then I realised just how old I'm getting. But music to me, music is it's a revolution. It's, it binds us all together in certain ways. It's, by working together, we can help each other to come together to save the world. A typical example of this was back in 1985, the 12th of June precisely, a man by the name of Bob Geldof put together, <coughs> put together a project that you all know of called Live Aid. <coughs> he brought together some of the greatest bands in the world, bands such as the Rolling Stones, the Police, Madonna, and put them all together for one day. Now by working together, all of us, all of us working together, we helped to raise millions for the thousands of starving people in, and millions of starving people in Africa. On that day, he had two concerts simultaneously, one in Wembley and one in Philadelphia. They went out from 12 o'clock in the day until 12 o'clock at night. 80 million euros were raised that day from that concert. All of us together working for the people of Africa. Further than that then, he brought out this record called Do They Know It's Christmas. He was a very passionate, very visionary man. 20 million was made on that record. 20 million, and 100 million back in 1985 with an awful lot of money, an awful lot of money. For me today, having three teenage children, music for me has come full circle. Believe me, it's not by choice. I get up in the morning and the first thing I hear is the iPhone is on. I hop into my car, I'm putting my finger just to hear the bad news of morning Ireland and I have a daughter who slips over, up, over to number six, I-04. And all I get is, I never, ever, ever, we're never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> That's not too bad. Not too bad. And she goes, Dad, not a great song. No. <laughs> so that's okay. So then I come home, and I come home from work, and I go upstairs and I'm just up in a few emails. Somebody might, might want to talk to me. And what do I get? She's up there in front of me downloading music and singing away there and banging away. I go downstairs to watch television. What's on? Sky. It's 364, 402, and 368. The charts, the whole thing is on. Music everywhere. But rather than knock it, like my parents did and said, would you ever turn off that hurdy-gurdy? <laughs> I embrace it. And I use it, I suppose, as a tool to communicate with my kids. It's also great for the hormone levels. But you can also have some great fun with music. 
I remember three weeks ago, it was three weeks ago, I was listening to, to this is the only thing about music I don't like, it's called rap. I was just sitting with my son, sitting and watching something on television, and I heard this, uh, some, it sounded something like, uh, I think it was something like, my father is a mother, my mother is another, my sister is a traitor, I do know what I do. I said, I said that, that's, that's not music. I said, I know, but that's not music. I said, I could do better than that. I could make a living on that. He turned around and he said, I defy it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like divine intervention. A song, one verse of a song I learned about 10 years ago flew into my mind. And I said, right. I, just out of nowhere, it came into my mind. So I stood up, and I never forget it. I stood up and I started, right. I said, in the merry month of June, from a home I started. And I said, in the merry month of June, from a home I started. Left the girls at home, nearly broken heart. I the father there and kept my darling brother. Drank a pint of beer, the pain and stretched to cover and off to reap the corn leave where I was born. I cut a stout black tower to banish ghost and goblin. Rang a pair of rolls. Vanished all the bars and rounded all the dogs and round the rocky roads at Dublin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. To the day I die, I will never forget the look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the Carlsberg guy. It was priceless. <laughs> but getting back to passion. If you have a passion, you follow it. Everyone in this room, if you have it, you follow it, you take it on. There are people in this room who want to be film directors. There are people in this room who probably want to grow bonsai trees up on the moon. Whatever it takes, follow your passion. Don't ever be afraid of it. Because without passion, we have nothing. Mine was to be the lead singer of the Rolling Stones. But as you've heard, I can't sing a note. <laughs>